you might be surprised to learn these secrets that have helped the top three websites, Google, YouTube, and Facebook, become the top three websites. Part of maintaining an awesome website is also satisfying people's desires, for better and for worse. When you offer something in very high demand, especially when people are in some state of psychological arousal while they're looking for it, then you can expect to have gigantic opportunities to get traffic to your website. For example, Google was one of the first search engines to make big improvements on the existing process. While I'm sure this was helpful for searching for I guess standard searches, that business searches, day to day, how do you do this? What it was really helpful for was searching for porn. Google's early adopters were loaded with people who loved that Google did a much better job finding them porn. They got a ton of their early traffic on that and then that is a big part to how they built their giant empire of a company they have now is people when searching for porn were willing to avidly and excitedly pun intended try a new search engine to say man maybe this will work a lot better than what I'm already using they were more open to trying something new to find the exact thing they were looking for and then since people were using that already to search for porn, then they just started searching for everything else on there too. So the key to getting that gigantic user base was capitalizing on that 50% of the market, of those porn searches, which are a gigantic amount of searches online. Google did a much better job of satisfying those searches and that helped it to build the user base that satisfied all searches then. And you wouldn't have thought outright as that of a way of maintaining and building an awesome website. But it seems to me the key to the top websites are to offer something of simple value that gives people in demand for what they want. It satisfies their demand for what they want. Facebook, same way. I remember the exact thought process I had signing up for Facebook because I was resistant in 2000 and five to sign up for Facebook when my friends in college kept telling me I should. And the motivating thought that finally got me to sign up for Facebook was that maybe I could find some of these girls I used to have crushes on in high school. That's how Facebook got to be so big is because it was very effective at doing just that. The audience it attracted of college students helped people like me at the same time get networked and find their crushes and old crushes more effectively plus then it helped you find new ones too so Facebook was really useful especially for the initial audience of making new connections like that and to me I looked at MySpace before and MySpace did not offer the same value because there weren't as many people on it and MySpace was really annoying to try and connect with people on it. Facebook made it really easy to look someone up and message them and have them as a friend and then keep track of them that way. And YouTube has the same value of appealing more to that huge black market audience. So you probably already know what YouTube does very well for yourself. YouTube, free music, free music videos. One of the huge things that led to YouTube building up rapidly is anyone could upload a music video onto YouTube and then it's right there out there for free. They, and you still can listen to all kind of music for free on YouTube. If you like a song, just look it up on YouTube. It's probably up on there. And that is the key to the top three websites being awesome or having tons of traffic or however you want to put it, the top three websites have all made giant 
leaps and innovations, especially in what you might call the black market or the fringe market, not the things that are overtly out there. But they didn't do it overtly. Google didn't set out to say, we're going to be the porn search giant. But it was a result of them simply doing what they were doing well across the board. So when you make a website that services people well across the board by the content and value you offer on it, then you have a chance to capitalize on some of the most in-demand markets which are usually less competitive. I did this myself with Facebook likes. When Facebook pages first came out, Facebook likes were in such high demand, I made a $700 sale without even having a website through a Facebook message. It was in such high demand, people were willing to risk a lot to try and do it. They were willing to have faith in someone who maybe had no credibility in online, no previous history of trying it, and who might just be using bots or fake profiles to get likes. So that in-demand area gave me the opportunity to get started with no previous experience. And then I have the luxury now of being able to use the experience I have to open up to better things. But the key that got me started was satisfying one of those more black market demands, black hat techniques of buying and selling Facebook likes. And I originally did it through Fiverr. So there were no real likes that I know of for the first six months, but I made enough money doing that I could then afford to learn Facebook ads and then offer a service that did a better job with it. And one last example of it that might help even more if you're in the tech world, take a look at Bitcoin. Why is Bitcoin growing so fast and why are people so excited about it? There's three primary markets that Bitcoin matters to. Techies, the people like you and me that are online that are learning things that just love doing all these things. Speculators, people with money who want to make more money. And the illegal or black market, people that want to transfer money quickly online. Things like buying drugs, buying illegal goods. Bitcoin is absolutely perfect for that because of the anonymity and because of the speed and because there's no take backs. A lot of the online payment methods, there's all these refund and credit consumer protection. With Bitcoin, if you send somebody the money, it's sent, it's gone. And there's the fees are way lower than Western Union or anything like that. And in fact, there are no fees actually to send it, it's just to buy Bitcoin, you usually will pay a little tiny fee. So Bitcoin satisfies all of those needs at once, plus all of the, I guess, legitimate needs. Bitcoin is growing rapidly because of that wide consumer demand. So to me, maintaining an awesome website, especially getting started as an entrepreneur online, it's critical to find a simple way you can appeal to human desires across the board in what you're doing. And the challenge then is to try and do it in a way that is white hat. For example, Google did a really good job with that. They made a search engine that just happened to do a lot of things really well. And they've had a lot of challenges growing with that. YouTube, had, which was bought by Google, has had a lot of challenges growing with having music for free on YouTube. It's challenging when you get things right as an entrepreneur, but if you don't satisfy that base demand first, if you don't make something that helps people with something they really care about to start with, you're never going to get high enough off the ground to have any problems that result from doing well. So I, when I started my first website and then my second and third website, I knew I had to find something people really needed because it was clear my first two websites, I wasn't making anything people really needed and I didn't make any money at all. And as soon as I gave people something they really needed, 
then I started having problems and making money at the same time. So success is usually going to be coupled with more challenges. So it just keeps getting more and more challenging, but I love it. And if you are an entrepreneur like me, you will love it too. So awesome websites satisfy people's most core desires in a simple and effective manner. Thank you and I hope that I'm sharing these steps with you in a way that's helpful and inspirational.